the first flames of this mid-September fire. Warm the cockles, part of heart's desire, to tread the boards again, tricked bravely out in motley or the graver shades, to spout or murmur my as well as Lear's dread fears and hopes. Our terra firma, Michael Vale's crazed slips. Were they scaffold? Who could ask for more? I do, for next year's autumn's ripe encore. Meanwhile, I'll try to look back in limerick form. I've a knack. I'll try to be nifty. With 50 years' history, I'll start here to get us on track. There's an encore I long for, envisage the decor, the oat of my couture, my doublet and hose, midnight blue, purple prose, golden gags, high hyperbole, three years in repertory, hundreds of nights when I became me. Were there ever two such springboards as Tom's attendant lords? I've broken into prose and I've broken the bounds of the limerick, but I'll get on track again. Is the limerick terribly cheap, more jig than poetic conceit. Can the lyric limerick be small and yet terrific, broad vision encapsuled in a peep? The National Theatre. A hundred years and more it took to get it. We had the appetite but couldn't wet it. When we did, what might have been was a transformation scene. The bard, of course, but someone called Sam Beckett. Olivier of the Old Vic, West End and Hollywood, pulled off the trick in spite of the factor of being an actor, of getting the very first pick. I watched him, the great nonpareil. I saw him the titan, I saw him so frail. Shared some slivers of history, but can't plumb his mystery. Hello, is still part of my tale. Peter Hall's well-shod foot in the door was for Larry's N.T. the last straw. Hall was not overborn. He added Kleinborn. His empire filled us with awe. Morning meetings he lit his cigar. Ian and I, me McKellen's co-star, ran our own acting group, an odd Motley troop, successful but no Shangri-La. Our cherry orchard gave the burghers glee, so Aberdeen endowed us with a tree. With a plaque our cherry planted, in a plot the N.T. granted. N.T. futures ripped it up, mon Dieu, tant pis. And then there came along one Richard Eyre, who claimed his N.T., Failed with Moliere. Failed, moi, oh, surely not. One critic raved, white hot. I ask you now, was air being really fair? So easy it is to deride Lasden's impervious pride. Form naked displayed, things absolute made. Did he ever once sit at the side? Do we forgive Dennis Lasden? Not cause he didn't, but has done. The Olivier's acoustics, reliable as poo sticks. Who's played it and says that he has one? We know that we all love to hate the Olivier's sight lines, acoustics concrete, but Trev played it tough. Said enough is enough. By the scruff of its neck, I will now recreate. He yanked the stage forward and raised it. Town criers won't have to oh yes it, 
fixed amplification. Oh, communication! They'll hear every line and who says it. So the platform was sixteen feet nearer the punters, their wraparound seats cheaper, not dearer. Trev's bit twixt his teeth by faith and belief, director and engine and steerer. Thus, second to none, was Nunn's bold attack. He altered the landscape, a showman's shrewd knack. Things are never the same. By the luck of the game, his successor moved everything back. Heitner's hyper-reality started to pall the old kitchen sink. Oh, no, not at all. His coup de théâtre is a loo for a start. The urinal's in the fourth wall. My part in the royal hunt of the sun was easily said and easily done. I'd call it a stinker. My priest of an Inca eclipsed me. Oh, pardon the pun. I prayed that the finish would come. I contemplate ending it all with a gun. We Incas were masked, and people, when asked, faltered, I think, uh, the Inca, which one were you, which one? A little way into the run, I was thrown on as god of the sun. My artifice gleamed, each artifice beamed. At bottom the star part has most of the fun. Marlowe's mighty line, redone by Brecht, its poetry and plot were somewhat wrecked, altered, rearranged, left me quite estranged, buggered by the dreaded A effect. Be it ever so humble, there's no place like home, no place, no place, turfed out and alone. This was the theme in the shed. Of studios, sheds, there's a generous spread. We've pleasures and palaces where we may roam. The shortage is chronic of what is called home. The show gets its cheers, lifts the roof. Of success, there is no firmer proof. And a roof for my head is so easily said, so cosy, so warm and aloof. Full houses and bums on each seat, such a theatre has joined the elite. But no place like home, no place like home. This scarcity is Britain's defeat. And such alienation is the shame of our nation. In this hybrid public-private sector, are we all in thrall to the director? Do we answer to the urge of the blessed dramaturge? At this theatric feast, who is the spectre? In this new dawn we are drawn to the designer, whose bounds are set still wider and yet finer, with their taste for blood or mud, costumes nippers in the bud, and much ado is set in Indochina. How many thousand nights and one? When was the flight from men in tights begun? Fatigues and leagues of modern dress, to nudity we acquiesce, and shepherdesses now are seldom done. When we feel our calves begin to ache, we blame the fangled angle of the rake. What's opaque may be see-through, in the dream or much ado, instead of bread there's cherry on the cake. I should quit now, whilst my muse is so behind. Theatre, gift to man and womankind. My verse is void, unless this praise to Dionysus, Thespis, honours magic. We have all of us divined. The actors are come hither with their lies. In masquerade, by truth, we are surprised. And yet it's only rational. We have this shrine, the national, a place where dreams made flesh are realized. <laughs>